Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Little Acts of Kindness. This will be Part 26, Chapter 26, entitled Hero Names, Recovery Girl Again. Izuku shifted as he looked at the door, expecting a knock, but he realized that it wasn't going to happen. After all, he had healed now. He frowned and exited out of the apartment, locking it behind him as he walked towards his train station, gifts for his teachers in his bag. He got on the train and partway through he flinched when a random person called out to him, congratulating him for the sports festival. Right, he supposed he should have expected this. Heart pounding away, he gave a shaky smile and a stuttered thanks. Finally, the train arrived at the station as Zuku left, holding the umbrella above him as he walked into the school. Arriving about the same time as Ida, Izuku ignored Ida's gaze as he placed the container of coffee on the teacher's table before going to his seat. The entire class arrived before Aizawa did and as soon as the bell rang, the room was silent and Aizawa walked in. He looked over them and nodded in approval. The most obvious thing was that his bandages were off. Aizawa sensei's face was no longer bruised and swollen, and the cut was healed over, clearly showing a scar. Good morning. Good to see your bandages off, Aizawa sensei, Kero. Asui spoke. The old lady's treatment was excessive, but never mind that. Today we've got a hero informatics class, and a special one at that. We'll see you Monday in class, little listener, but if I were you, I would start thinking of hero names, Mike had said as he walked him to his apartment door, giving a wink. Just don't tell Sho that I warned you. Hero names. Izuku has had all weekend to figure something out, and he did have an idea for a name. It hadn't been easy, but heroes were supposed to help people when they were in trouble, supposed to be shining beacons. Izuku knew that not all heroes were like that from personal experience. He had seen what heroes would turn away or wouldn't help someone whether it was due to a person's quirk or appearance or some other matter. He had seen it done to other people and experienced it himself when he was being hurt by Bakugo and his friends, a hero which Izuku had later recognized as Naida had hurried right on by, even as their eyes had met and Izuku had silently begged for help. He could never understand how a hero who had worked with All Might would walk away from someone needing help. But there were also the heroes that got bad press about them, but actually helped people, Izuku had been walking through one of the back routes when he heard a girl a few years younger than him crying about her cat stuck in a tree. Surprisingly, it had been Endeavor who helped her, getting the cat out and handing it over before walking away. His face grumpy the entire time, but at least he had gone out of his way to help, even when there was no actual villain for him to fight or civilians in danger. Izuku wanted to be an underground hero in order to help people. He wanted to be a kind person who helped others, even though he gained nothing for it. He didn't want to be a hero for the money or the fame at all. Act of Kindness. AOC. But that didn't really sound like an actual name. So, tapping his pen against his chin, he had brainstormed for a good hour or two before finally settling on Act of Random Kindness, or ARC for short. Izuku focused back on the present. You'll be coming up with your hero aliases, but first. Concerning the pro-hero draft picks I mentioned the other day. Aizawa started before telling them more about it. Then he pointed to the board and the numbers. Remember, this afternoon you will be picking hero names. Yayorozu had 2,000, Bakugo 1,000, Shinzo, who wasn't even in their class, apparently had still 500 offers. Izuku himself had around 250, with the numbers steadily declining. Bakugo had become pissed as he started shouting, enraged that Yayorozu had gotten so many offers when she didn't even put up a real fight. He stormed up to her demanding a rematch without her cheating, and he slammed a hand down on her desk, exploding it, and a shard cut her arm, causing her to cry out in pain. The explosions cut off and the class found Aizawa glaring. Principal's office. Now. Aizawa marched Bakugo out of the room, Mike coming in in a moment later, and getting them started on English. After that, the classes passed as normal, with him handing gifts before or after lessons, at lunchtime, Izuku started to go to the cafeteria, but with a buzz of his phone, he changed direction, solving the brief riddle Nezu sent him. Apparently, it was time to have another lesson with the principal. Once lunch ended, he was returned to classes. Bakuga was still missing. Aizawa started to give a brief reiteration to the internships and the names, and then midnight burst in, interrupting him. Aizawa took that as his cue to get into his sleeping bag. One by one, people went up, from Asui's Froppy to Uraraka's Uravity. There were so many cool hero names. Finally, he went up, gulping. He took a deep breath and focused. Ark, the helping hero. Izuku gave a smile, inwardly fist-pumping, that he had only started once. His classmates smiled back and gave encouragement, saying it was a good name. Soon everyone had picked a hero name or gone with their own name for now. 
Good. Now we're finalizing the list of heroes you can pick to intern with for those who didn't get offers. Please think about what kind of hero you want to be and what type of hero you should intern with to further your studies. Have a good day. The bell rang and Izuku walked out, heading towards the train station. It was strange, and he definitely didn't like how everyone was looking at him. He blinked in surprise when Kaminari sat next to him. Hey, Midoriya. <laughs> Hello. My grandma wanted me to come visit, so I'm taking the train to go see her. I'm glad you're here. I really don't like riding trains alone, you know. Kaminari laughed a bit and lowered his voice. Especially now, since everyone keeps looking at me. I didn't even make it to the finals. Izuku nodded. Anyways, I was a bit curious, actually. Curious? Izuku asked, biting his lip a bit. Yeah, you're, like, good at analysis, right? I mean, you did seem to be writing a lot during the sports festival when you weren't fighting. I... I'm okay. It's just a hobby, really. Izuku nervously deflected. Kids being interested in his notebooks were never a good thing. They tended to mock him for it or rip it up, or they called him a stalker. Well, I was wondering what you thought of Mike work. See, I can't really think of a way to improve my use besides for upping the watts. I'm pretty sure you've seen the effects of me using higher wattages, though. Kaminari said, giving a hesitant laugh. Izuka bit his lip. There was one thing he thought might help. Why don't you use it for close-ranged combat more? And instead of one big blast, coat your body in electricity. Oh, like I did at the USJ with Yayorozu and Jiro. I guess I've been so focused on trying to direct my electricity once it discharges, I forgot that it was super effective at close range, but wouldn't throw myself at enemies all the time be super risky. If you learned martial arts, maybe, Izuka suggested. Kaminari nodded. Thanks. Still can't believe I forgot about close range combat. I could have been so much better in the sports festival. The rest of the train ride passed, Kaminari chatting away while Izuku mainly listened. A few times he was surprised when the electric boy made him laugh from his jokes. Eventually, though, he reached a stop and gave a shuddered goodbye. That had gone a lot better than he expected. He walked the rest of the way home, and the rest of the day passed with nothing of interest happening. The next morning, he took an earlier train in order to hopefully escape the crowds of people. It only helped a little bit, as the train was still fairly crowded. Finally, he made it to UA and took a seat in the classroom, being the first to arrive. About ten minutes later, Aizawa showed up. The man gave him a nod as he sipped his coffee. How are you holding up, Midoriya? Izuku shrugged. I... I don't like the attention. Aizawa just nodded. I hated the attention I got after my first sports festival as well. They'll get over it in a few days, once the next big headline comes out. Izuku just nodded. Aizawa dug around in his pocket and pulled out a jelly packet. Here. One kiwi-flavored jelly packet for your enjoyment. Izuku beamed. Thanks, he said as he grabbed it. Aizawa just looked amused. A few minutes later, Mike walked in. Little listener! M Mike sensei Izuku returned, giving a smile to the blonde teacher. Mike chuckled. You know, you can call me Yamada if you want. Oh, y Yamada sensei then. Mike, or rather Yamada beamed, shooting finger guns. Ten minutes before the first bell was set to ring, Ida came out and Mike, no, Yamada, walked out. Izuku looked at Ida and remembered a news article he had read yesterday, apparently on the sports festival Ida's brother being hurt by the hero killer. Uh, Ida? Yes, Midoriya? I is your brother okay? I j just saw the, the article y yesterday. Ida gave a small smile. He's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, all right. Soon most of the other kids filed into the room and took their seats, falling silent as soon as the bell rang. Aizawa stood up and got them started, informing them that they would be going over the rules and procedures they would have to obey during the internships. Hiroshima asked where Bakuga was, and Aizawa revealed that he'd been suspended for three days, and that his behavior was now under review. Homeroom ended, and Yamada came back in, smiling as he said he would be passing out the quizzes they took last week, and how most of them did okay, but that there were a couple areas he wanted to go over as most of the class had missed it. Yamada handed the papers to Ida, who passed them out. As was standard, and Izuku looked at his grade. 100. And there was a note written, in English, but it was simple to translate. Good job, Midoriya. Keep up the awesome work. Yamada had written, and Izuku felt his eyes water as he felt a warm feeling flood him. The last time a teacher had written a complimenting note on his papers had been when he was a toddler, before he was diagnosed as quirkless. Izuku looked up and caught Yamada's gaze. Thank you, he mouthed. Yamada just smiled and gave a small nod. Izuku's throat started to feel itchy. 
a light sensation that he didn't even notice at first until he noticed it was steadily increasing, becoming more itchy as the lesson continued, and as English ended, it became painful. There was the oddest sensation of something sliding down his throat, even clogging it, so during the next lesson he ended up coughing to try to get rid of the strange sensation. The cough sounded wet and raspy, drawing looks from his classmates, and Izuku, feeling a wetness in his clothes, looked to see blood on his clothes. Alarmed, he raised his hand and waited for Midnight to turn around, ending up coughing a few more times. Midnight, Sensei. Midoriya needs to ask you something, Yayorozu called out. The art history teacher turned around. Yes, Midoriya. Can I go to recovery, girl? He asked, coughing again. Midnight's eyes widened as she noticed the blood. Yes, of course. Tokiyami, would you escort him? The boy nodded and walked alongside him. As the pain seemed to spike and Izuku gagged, feeling the urge to throw up as something slid down his digestive system. They were right outside of Recover Girl's office when he threw up, vomiting what looked to be blood and flesh onto the floor. His throat still hurt like crazy, as if a ton of blades was being dragged up and down his throat. The door opened and Recover Girl looked out. Oh dear, come in, come in, what happened? She asked, looking at Tokiyami. During English, Midori started coughing a bit. As the class progressed, they were getting worse, and after Art started, they were making this wet sound and he was coughing up blood. Midoriya, do you think this is your quirk or something else? Izuku paused and realized that it probably was his quirk. He knew that he had been getting close to trusting Yamada-sensei before the sports festival. Then the man had protected him and wrote a little note. It was just a buildup of everything the man had done, even when Izuku couldn't help but be reminded of. Well, the fact of the matter was Izuku trusted Yamada, so obviously his quirk was kicking in. He nodded to her. Poor oh, dearie, we'll just have to wait for it to finish. Then if you don't mind, I would like you to do another scan adding a full body scan for the future. He just gave a nod in agreement, his throat hurting too much. Recovery Girl brought over a bucket as he sat on the bed, coughing into the towel she provided so he didn't ruin his school uniform anymore. Tokiyami started to return to class after saying goodbye, but Dark Shadow popped out, asking to stay. The Shadow didn't wait for permission and came over and started nuzzling Izuku. Hesitantly, Izuku patted the Shadow's head. He looked up to Tokiyami, who was staring bewildered at Dark Shadow. Can we stay, please? Dark Shadow asked. Izuku looked at the intelligent quirk's pleading expression and nodded. The quirk grinned and hesitantly Tokiyami stepped back in. He seemed to be unsure. Recovery Girl let him stay for a few minutes, until Izuku's vomiting got worse and she told him he should return to class. Nothing had been said, but Izuku supposed the silent companionship had been nice. There was a painful rip at the front of his neck. Near his lower jaw, and Izuku felt something clogging his throat and he coughed, spitting out something hard that clattered in the bucket. Recovery Girl grimaced as she saw it. That was your hyoid bone. Izuku raised his hand to scratch at his neck, as the newly empty place seemed to be rebuilding. His ears started to sting at this point, and about ten minutes later he felt liquid trailing out of them. He shifted his hair, showing Recovery Girl who just sighed. Izashi's quirk does give his ears protection against the loud noises his quirk produces. Basically, when noises over a certain point are being made, his ears have a mechanism that makes a barrier in his outer ear to middle ear causing a blockage that for most people would be a conductive hearing loss. As soon as he stops using his quirk, the barrier goes away, letting him hear everything again. Izuka nodded, grimacing, as his throat and ears continued to itch and sting in pain. It wasn't all-encompassing, but it was annoying and distracting. A couple hours passed before the pain fully disappeared, and he stopped throwing up blood. Now Recovery Girl wanted to do a full MRI scan on him, though at least his clothes would be cleaned while he was being scanned. All right, listeners, this concludes chapter 26 of Little Acts of Kindness. Izuku getting his Ashi's quirk makes me really happy. I want to hear your thoughts and reactions as well, though. And as always, thank you so much for listening.